Hey guys, this is Adam with TAT Express, and today I'm gonna go over a Volvo D13 DPF inspection and service. If you have a D13 Volvo and you're having issues with your DPF, this video should help you out. Make sure to share this video if you know anybody else that has the same issues or is having issues with their DPF system. Make sure to subscribe to us if you haven't subscribed to us yet, and hit that notification bell so you know next time we release another video. Let's get right into this. Okay guys, so inspecting and servicing your DPF filter is very important. Uh, it's going to be important on all platforms, but especially a Volvo. Okay, Volvo uh, basically calls out for the filter to be either cleaned or replaced at 250K or 4,000 hours, whichever comes first. Pushing, pushing the, the maintenance interval past these recommendations, you can experience all types of problems. Uh, some of the items that you can experience are going to be increased DPF regenerations, uh, high, higher than normal EGT, uh, incorrect reporting of DPF soot levels, and filter core damage. If you're not checking out this filter when you're getting a check engine light uh, and you keep pushing the truck further, of course it's going to derate and in some cases it's going to keep you from actually driving a truck. I have seen customers unplug items so that the truck can continue to roll. I do not recommend doing this. Even if you're trying just to get to the shop, uh, basically if, if the computer is reading that the system is clogged up or the DPF filter is clogged up, it's basically disabling it so it doesn't cause any damage. So by you disabling that safeguard could basically cause a lot of damage to your engine. So we do not recommend doing any kind of modifications so that you can push the truck even further. So it's very important to get these check engine lights checked out. If you're around a 250K mark, I would recommend you schedule a cleaning and an inspection of your DPF filter. Okay guys, so the next item we're gonna be checking on your DPF filter before we do anything, uh, of course we're gonna be hooking up, we're gonna check out the codes. Uh, you're gonna get all types of codes when the system starts getting clogged up, when your DPF filter gets clogged up. Uh, so the first item we're gonna be checking for is soot level. Okay, so Volvo recommends that the filter actually be replaced if the soot level is exceeded for what it's calling out. So for example, 2007, their max soot level is gonna be 200%. For 2010 and above, it's gonna be 160%. So what that means is, if we go into the computer and we see that your soot level has exceeded the recommended, then instead of doing a force region or getting those filters clean, Volvo is actually recommending you replace the filter. Uh, after replacing the filter, you need to find the root cause of your uh, excessive soot. Um, resetting your soot level and doing a region is not recommended. If you're, if you're exceeding these soot levels, and you do a uh, clear if you clear out and reset the soot levels and do a regen, damage to the engine can occur. You're basically you're having too much back pressure in that filter. So when you're running a, a regen, uh, of course everyone knows a regen the the idle or the RPMs are are going to be very high. Uh, so when that happens and you have a clogged filter, uh, you're creating a lot of back pressure. You can cause damage to the turbo, excessive soot in in the EGR cooler system. Uh, basically just clogging the system up, it's not safe. If you are under those soot levels, you are able to actually get the filter clean. I would still recommend finding out why you're having high soot levels. When you do have a filter cleaning, uh, it is recommended that you reset the learned values. Uh, basically, Volvos have different um, parameters that they actually learn. So if you have a, a replacement on a dozer, uh, if you have a replacement on any NOx sensors, the actual system needs to be reset. The learned values need to be reset. Basically, Volvo computers are learning the different uh, sensors, the different components. So if you replace the component, basically it's going to uh, recall the last uh, or, the, or the history of the old component. Uh, so when you put a new component on there, you may still have some issues. So making sure to reset the actual learned values and your soot levels if you are under the max allowed, allowable soot levels, okay? So moving right along, if your soot level is under the recommendation, the next item we're going to be checking for is back pressure. 
And the way we check this is the DPF filter actually has a differential pressure sensor uh, that checks the inlet and outlet pressure of the, of the after treatment system. Basically, it's checking the difference between the two. So we go into the computer, we actually do a DPF uh, differential pressure check. It's letting us bring the RPMs up to 1800. So once we actually bring the RPMs up to 1800, we're checking that sensor. That differential pressure sensor needs to be below 2.0. 2.2 psi if it's above 2.2 psi then we need to remove the filter uh, get it clean check it out make sure that everything's working uh, correctly if you're having high back pressure make sure you're checking the uh, the tubes that actually connect to the differential pressure sensor if those tubes are going to be clogged or are or, or, or caked up with soot then you could have incorrect readings do not run a regen if you're running over 2.2 psi if you're seeing that much back pressure damage to the engine or damage to the actual dpf filter can occur you don't want to damage either one of them if you have to replace the filter and you end up damaging it in some cases the core will not be accepted so that's going to just be adding that much more onto the cost of replacing that filter so if you're under 2.2 PSI and you're under the actual limit of the sit levels, go ahead and run a regen. Uh, check out all the parameters, make sure you're monitoring all the parameters, making sure everything is actually meeting the specs when you're actually doing the regen. After the regen is complete, it's recommended to do a, another DPF differential pressure check. Running a differential pressure check after a service regen is to ensure you don't have a damaged filter or a filter that's excessively clogged with ash. Now, you want to do this test after the EGTs has stabled. So around 500, about 575 degrees on the EGT temperature is really where you want to run this same test again. So again, we're going to go into the computer. The computer is going to allow us to bring the RPMs up to 1800 RPMs. We're going to run this for 30 seconds to check the differential pressure. Now, if you're 1.3, uh, if you're above 1.3, then it's recommended to pull the filter, replace it. Uh, actually put it back together, reset the soot levels, and do the test again. If it's below 1.3, then you're good to go. So when you're servicing the after-treatment system or the DPF filter, it's very important to check out the DPF regeneration history. Uh, you want to look at different triggers that cause these uh, regions to happen. You want to look at soot levels, just different readings to make sure that everything's working correctly. Also, you want to talk to the driver to check his application use. Uh, it's not recommended to have high idle times. Uh, any type of PTO usage is not recommended. So uh, talking to your driver, asking him how he's using the truck is very important to figure out the root cause of excessive buildup soot. So if you're having to actually remove the filter, I want to go over some items to check for. You want to make sure there's not any kind of fluid contaminants on it. The center of the filter is called out as a media. Uh, you want to make sure that media is not pushed out, pushed in, uh, cracked on any sides. Uh, also, be very careful when handling the filter. You want to protect, uh, take very uh, good precaution on the ceiling surfaces. Uh, make sure not to damage any of the ceiling surfaces because if you are going to get this filter clean and reinstalled and you have damaged ceiling surfaces, you can have actually leaks and cause you to have incorrect readings with the differential pressure sensor. When checking your filter for contamination on the DOC and DPF, uh, sometimes the DOC can be reused if the contamination isn't severe. Uh, if you don't have oil dripping or fuel dripping out of your DOC uh, and the contaminant is not greater than four inches, then you can reuse the DOC. If the DOC is contaminated, uh, dripping with fuel and oil, it cannot be reused. Uh, and you want to make sure you check out the DPF filter as well. In some cases, those contaminants can move over to the DPF filter. Now, you don't want to run a filter that's been contaminated with fuel or oil because the temperature can go very high. It can go higher than normal, cause the filter to melt, and cause very big, very major damage. So, uh, make sure that you check those out. Also, if you do have a contaminated filter and you do have to replace it with a new one, make sure you find the root cause of the contamination. Okay, so you want to make sure you don't put a new filter on there and the new filter gets contaminated as well. So keep that in mind. Okay, another contaminant you may experience is coolant. Uh, you want to make sure, of course, to find the root cause of why the coolant's in there in the exhaust system. Get that fixed. Drain it all out. Make sure it's clean. Uh, dry the system. 
it is not required to replace the DPF filter or DOC if it's been contaminated with coolant or water. Another item we're going to be checking for is to make sure the filter is actually not being pushed out of its housing. If you see the filter being pushed out of the housing and needs to be replaced, some of the causes of this could be excessive back pressure due to excessive soot buildup, oil, or fuel contaminants. Any of these items need to be checked. The root cause needs to be checked out. Uh, another item that can cause excessive buildup is sensors not reading correctly, EGR coolers clogged up, EGR valves clogged, uh, turbo VGTs not working correctly, or clogged up sensors. So you want to make sure all these items have been checked if you find a filter that's been pushed out. Another cause of excessive soot could be excessive idling, uh, oil consumption, or poor fuel quality. Inspecting the face of the filter, uh, making sure that you don't have any cracks, uh, any gouges, anything out of the, out of the ordinary on a, D, a DPF filter uh, needs to be uh, replaced, okay? If you have soot buildup on the face of the filter, that does not recommend or call out for a replacement. Uh, the way you determine if a filter needs to be replaced is, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, uh, if it's exceeding the soot percentages or if the, uh, the dif differential pressure, pressure test is not passing. Okay, on the DOC, you want to make sure that there's not any foreign contaminants going in there. Also, you want to look for any debris, any kind of metals going into the DOC. The SCR system is a self-contained system. You're not going to be able to open this system, um, system up to inspect it. Uh, basically, you're only going to be able to run tests uh, to make sure that the NOx uh, readings are, are correct and they're responding correctly. Uh, if you do have a saturated filter, it's recommended that, of course, you find the root cause of the saturation. Uh, if you have to replace the filters, replace those filters uh, and run the test on the SCR system after the test pass for the DPF and DOC uh, just to verify everything's working correctly on your SCR system. Since the DPF filter is downstream from the exhaust, we're going to be covering turbo failures as well. Okay, so if you have a turbo failure that's ex passing excessive oil, uh, it's already contaminated the DOC, you want to make sure it's not going into the intake side. Diesel engines will burn any fuel, so if it has excessive oil going into the intake, it's going to use that to bur actually burn and run the engine. It can overrun the engine, overspeed the engine, cause major damage. So if you have a turbo failure, it's passing a lot of oil, you want to make sure to clean not only the exhaust side, but the intake side as well. Now, if you have a major failure of any metal components being destroyed in the turbo, being shot into the DOC, you want to make sure to get your CAC checked out. If metals are going into the intake side, uh, the code side of the turbo, then you, as I mentioned, check that CAC out. It could be damaged. You can put a new turbo on there, clean the exhaust side, but have a damaged CAC, which is your air cooler, and have uh, actually a boost leak. And when you have boost leaks, you're going to have excessive soot buildup. So making sure all that's being checked checked out. In some cases, if a turbine is completely destroyed, if a turbo shaft is completely destroyed, Volvo actually recommends replacing the SCR system. Now before doing this, what I would do is after you get everything replaced, you check your CAC, uh, you make sure your DOC is not damaged, everything's back to back to uh, back together, you're testing your differential pressure sensor, you're checking your back pressure, everything looks good, then I would run uh, the I would run the functionality test to make sure your NOXs are actually responding like they're supposed to. If they're not, then in that case you may have to replace the SCR box. Another item to check for on your turbo is to make sure that your VGT vanes are not restricted. Uh, make sure the actuator is working correctly. Uh, if you're having excessive soot, this can be caused by the turbo not working correctly. So if you have built up soot in the turbo vanes, this could cause the turbo not to open and close correctly, uh, eventually causing excessive soot. Now this can be also caused by clogged EGR coolers, uh, EGR valves not working correctly, differential pressure sensors on the EGR valve or intake pressure sensors uh, on the on the actual intake of the engine. If any of these sensors are clogged up, they can cause soot to build up on in, inside the turbo. Now, if you have excessive soot build up in the turbo and you have a failure with veins, uh, VGT veins, then the entire turbo needs to be replaced. 
So keeping all this in mind, if you're having excessive soot buildup, this is probably gonna be one of your causes. Any of these items that I mentioned need to be checked, cleaned, especially around the interval marks. Uh, if Usually I recommend around 500K, uh, but as I mentioned, Volvo is mentioning that these, these filters, DPF filters need to be cleaned or replaced at 205K. So if you're around that mark, make sure you're getting this maintenance done. It's better to prevent this maintenance, this, these problems from happening before uh, actually a major repair actually happens. So keep that in mind. Okay guys, so that's what we're looking for on a D13 Volvo DPF inspection and service. Uh, I hope you guys learned something. Uh, if you got any questions or concerns about your engine, please leave us a comment below or you can email us at info at tatexpressinc.com or you can also call us during business hours at 972-225-3017. If you know of anybody that may have issues with their after treatment system, please share the video. Make sure to subscribe to us. Hit that notification bell so you know next time we release another video. So until next time, guys, be safe.